Hey everyone, welcome to a special Thursday edition of Unsealed and Revealed. I'm your host, Terry Smith, and with me, as always, is my buddy and yours, Guy Clender, over there in the Sideshow Studios. Hi, Guy. Hey, how you doing, Terry? And Paul, doing as pretty usual, good, thank you. Thank you, guys, for coming in and letting us do this. Cool. In addition to Guy, we have uh, the guy, the guy in the chair uh, down there below him in the sideshow in the sideshow dungeon, uh, Mr. Paul Hernandez. Hey there, Paul. Looking mighty good. There's a battle going on behind you. I don't know if you were aware. Yeah, I'm just. Uh, it looks like the the battle is raging. I, I'm gonna. I feel like a, I would be a terrible news a weather person. Like uh, <laughs> it appears, there's a lot of people in spandex fighting against each other in a big You're space no war. You're no longer the yeah, guy in the chair. Yeah, it's going great here. You're the side war correspondent. Infinity war correspondent. As <laughs> Infinity war. Yeah. Infinity war respondent. So, hello, everyone. Uh, we are live on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, the Let Your Geeks Tech Show Facebook group. Um, wherever you guys are, uh, like, comment, subscribe. Um, every time you do, Terry takes another swig of his coffee that he's drinking. So uh, thank you guys so much. If you have any questions about this uh, incredible piece that we're going to get to in a second, just let me know wherever you're watching, and I'll relay it to these two gentlemen. Oh, God, somebody just liked it again. Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Keep on liking, folks. Let me bouncing off the walls in no time. All of us together. Love that. Love that. All right, cool. Um, speaking of things that I love, Guy, I love what's on the table in front of you. You oh. want to talk to me about it? Oh, but before we do, actually, I had a couple of notes I needed to hit. Uh, there will be no uh, Guess the Reveal contest again today. Uh, we're saving that for another time. Um, instead, we're going to. I just wanted to talk to you really quick. Again, this is only a second of three episodes of Unsealed and Revealed that are coming your way this week. Uh, in addition, today with the Thanos battle damaged uh, version six scale figure by Hot Toys tomorrow as a special Friday the 13th edition of Unsealed and Revealed, we will be unboxing the Jason Voorhees six scale figure by Sideshow. Uh, I've had my hands on this figure before. It's really, really awesome and a whole lot of fun. You can get some really creepy stuff with it. So I'm really looking forward to playing with that, posing by proxy with my buddy Guy. Uh, so tune in tomorrow. If you're any kind of a horror fan at all, I'm sure that you'll find something to love there. Uh, that having been said, without further ado, oh, probably should point out don't you think maybe just let everybody know that there's a slight possibility even a likelihood in fact i'd call it a certainty that we're going to be giving away one of those jason Voorhees six scale figures to one lucky viewer on the show tomorrow mm -hmm. that seems pretty important probably something i shouldn't have even come that close to to leaving out but uh got it in there under the wire buried the lead <laughs> as we say in the journalism business. In, in that journalism I know business. a thing or two about burying leads my friend I know it. Mm -hmm. um so guy you've got Thanos in front of you let's talk about that mad titan show us what exactly he's got. I'm going to enjoy this very much uh here we go battle damage version we're going to see him on the front you see that grit teeth uh on there this is of course the uh style that we've been seeing with the wrap around the cutouts you're going to have that gold foil of the gauntlet uh, there on the top, Avengers logo down on the bottom. This is a very big guy. Boom. Slide the sleeve off. All right, you got the window. Also done in the gold. Wow. All right. Um, this is a heavy figure. Very, very heavy figure. If uh, you call if that infinity gold. Yeah. Uh, if, you've, gold. if you've. If uh, you've. If you've uh, had any of the other Thanos, you know that these are very, very heavy figures. Uh, and this guy does have some serious heft. Serious, serious heft to him. All right, so let's take a look. I'm going to hold this up, and then I'm going to pull everything out. Uh, what you're going to have here, you're going to have the battle damage blade, the additional hands in the top. Then underneath, you've got your main tray, which is going to have our figure, his helmet, the alternate portrait, and of course, what we're all excited to have in this is that nano gauntlet. Then, on the lower tray, we are going to have our display base. And I'm going to pull that one out here as well. So, just a quick bit of unpacking that we're going to do. Just, uh, just looking at all that, all that gold and all the different metallic components in the paint job on uh, on the figure itself, guy. I'm, I'm reminded. I just, uh, I just had an opportunity to unbox the Mark Twenty One Midas six scale figure. Um, the Iron Man. It's, it's a variant of the Iron Man Mark Seven armor uh, from Iron Man Three, and it's uh, Hot Toys is really, really on point when it comes to 
diversifying the tones of metal that they put onto a figure. They don't get lazy on it. They really, really go all out to give you a wide variety, provide some texture and some depth to the metallic components of both the die cast pieces and the plastic pieces. And it really, really benefits the uh, figure overall that they do so. And I'm seeing a lot of that in what they, I'm seeing on panels right there today. They do an amazing job with the metals. Now you just talked about the Midas and that one I know was a die cast figure. And I wanna make sure that we talk about the materials used in this. Doing something this large in die cast would be really, really heavy. Um, yeah. So even though these look like metal pieces, these are actually going to be plastic pieces. Uh, with a great amount of paint. That uh, actually that actually relieves me quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, I think if you had these done in a um, yeah. in a metal, uh, you know, we often think, oh boy, that's going to be so much better. But uh, I think it actually would have kind of hindered uh, some of the things you're going to do on that. Now, you see the expression on the face of this character. This is the one that is going to come with um, in the box, and it is that shocked expression. Uh, which is really a neat expression to uh it, it speaks volumes man I it mean, does um, it does i don't I, that's something about thanos it, that was interesting is that did he did he overestimate himself there? The, the storytellers in the mcu really did a remarkable job of just humanizing the mad titan uh, making him almost uncomfortably relatable in some cases and just just looking at just seeing that look on his face almost broke my heart for him. I mean, th don't get me wrong, the guy's clearly crazy as a loon, but uh, but in a way you could kind of relate to him. Exactly. I mean, th and that's that's where you get a good character, is uh, you know, a, a bad guy or a villain that that knows they're bad is pretty weak. Um, yeah, that's dope. in in, in uh, storytelling. He thought what he was doing made perfect sense, and that was what was pretty incredible about him. So let's, uh, let's do a quick head to toe. Now we have seen, uh, and we did do that here on the show, the armored version of him. This battle damage is pretty extensive. You look in the shoulders, here you see all of those additional wax from uh, the different uh, armaments. You see that he does have the cuts and bruises. You also see that those were on the face as well. Uh, coming down, again, still damaged. Now this here, um, is a rubberized piece, okay? The tips of those are a plastic, uh, the gold versions there, all right? Just uh, a lot, a lot of weathering done on this. And that's kind of the neat part, is that even though there's so much of it, it's done in, in, in a style that it all seems quite natural. It's not overly done uh, on it good because I mean I as well his armor did get royally torched by his uh, encounter with the Scarlet Witch during the final battle um, it's it's it also continued to be damaged throughout the course of the fight there were some there was it was moderately damaged while he was fighting the big three at the beginning obviously the most damage was done by by uh, the Scarlet Witch Wanda but um, you need to find uh -huh. a nice middle ground with something like this um, and I think that they did it I don't think that it's uh, I don't think it's over the top I think it's very tastefully done correct uh also see the battle damage that's done on the helmet as well. So every bit of the armor that does get wet. And in, I went through and did some single frame captures and they, of course, Hot Toys obviously is doing that as well uh, when they are sculpting and adding those that they are exactly where they're supposed to be. They, are, they, don't, they don't guess on this type of stuff. So when you see the bangs, the dings, the dents. That thing is random. Yeah, they really do an incredible job on it. Now, uh, let's start talking about some of the uh, points of articulation and a few of the things that you have uh, on this one. Right here, you do have his shoulder armor. Now, don't think that uh, when you get it that somehow yours is missing a piece. He only has one of them. It's only the right one, and it is magnetic. All right. Uh, in the box, it'll yeah. come with a, a bit of foam underneath that. He's also going to come with, and I wanted to show that these are here. You'll have foam underneath the arms, okay, as well. Uh, I want to show a bit of the, the packaging that you're going to have. Also, you're going to be removing the hands and removing the, uh, the gauntlets, and underneath is going to be a bit of foam as well. Now, you heard those ratchet joints, so you can go up pretty far, and then I can magnetically... This is the sound of confidence. With something this big, you surely are going to want that. 
Yeah. Surely you're going to want something like that. So we're going to. Because yeah. uh, there's there's some resistance that's being met there uh, between the arms and the and the armor. Um, that that armor is going to put some pressure on those arms. Putting you can't get armor without arm. Anyway, you're right. Um, it's going to put some pressure on those arms, and without those ratcheted joints, uh, the figure might be tempted to uh, drop the arms and rather than hold them aloft. Um, so yep. Yeah. yeah. Kudos. Thanks. Uh, for head is going to be traditional ball joint here. Now you do have that back armor there, so it is going to go just to about there before his chin will will touch there. As far as a forward neck motion, there's nothing there because this is a solid piece. Okay. Also, talking about solid pieces, this is solid armament there. Uh, Terry and I are going to show um, how to how to manipulate that uh, the legs to create a midsection turn. Uh, Terry, thank you so much for teaching me how to do that. That uh, has brought a lot of life into these figures for me. Yeah. Uh, so then we get to the arms, and we talked about those ratchets. Ratchet again, up to the okay. ninety. Getting a good idea of what I can do here. All righty. Traditional ball joint on the hands, and you do have these. It's going to come with fists. He is going to have both a right and a left grip hand. Does it come with fists of fury? Uh, fists of fury, exactly. Um, no. It's going to have right and left in more of an open palm. Oh, yeah. That grasping is just like, ugh. And so then much going the on. right and left in the menacing grip style. Yeah, as one well. of my okay. favorites. So you do have a, uh, a number of those. Uh, working our way down here. There's that ratchet. Now, see, that's... We talk about the Terry Trunk Twist. That's what it, the Terry Trunk Twist sounds like when I do it. Uh, myself. It, it actually... I actually make a cracky sound. Uh, that's, that's the sound of your vertebrae? <laughs> that's the sound of my vertebrae there. Uh but again, ratchet there, so you've got that going for you. Uh, we work down to the leg. All of these joints you're hearing, almost all are ratchet. You don't have a ratchet on the uh, on the wrist or on the ankle. Oh my God, what's over here? Uh, I just caught get... a look at that finger snap glove, and I'm. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm teasing you with that thing, aren't I? Oh, you teasing are, you, really teasing are. you with it. Um, as you can so see, we've got a good solid spread there. You do have a ball joint on the feet. I don't think he was ever quite that splayed out. However, he can do it, and he is standing there on his own. With that, and I'll tear you Look trunk. at that ankle articulation, that range of motion in that ankle. That's impressive. Exactly. And you need that for him, because he's going to be hitting some great, you're going to want to hit some great combat poses there. It's uh, That's going to be fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I can already tell we're going to do something cool here. Yeah, I'm, I'm digging on that, just to, to see that. Um, ratchet on our knee as well on that. We're going to go a little past 90 on there, just a bit. I mean, only a few degrees um, past on there. Remember, you do have the, the armament. So he said it's going to be ball joint Collision on the arm. foot. And then that extra bit in the toes. I love extra bits. Extra extra bits. You know what else you're gonna yeah. love? It's coming. It's coming for you, Terry. Here it it's comes. Coming right now. Ba -ba -ba. It's time for tread. Boom. Watch. <clears throat> I gurgled that one a little bit. That is some. <laughs> that is some big honking tread. Yeah, that's some. That's some uh, what we call back home. We call those uh, poop kickers or something like that. Yeah, those, yeah. those are definitely some some intense guys there. Uh, <laughs> Uh, back to uh, more articulation That's points. Strange, you are able to twist out from the hip, which uh, Terry, this is again something you've been able to to work uh, with myself and others on, is to give them so much life by doing that that uh, that twist in the leg. So you make it, baby. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's mm -hmm. you know, um, I, I no longer really look at them as limitations. Um, they're, they're merely obstacles or challenges uh, to overcome, and it's kind of fun to, to figure it out. I mean, that's part of, the, part of the world of play that we're talking about here. Uh, now, the arms are going to be on a ball joint. You're going to be able to spin them. Of course, once you start hitting the armor, you're going to want to stop. However, I can pull it out to go higher up if need be. Okay. 
All right. Yeah, so, that's rad. So you got a lot of movement. The only thing you're going to be um, hindered by at all will be the, the armor, and you're going to work yourself around that, which is pretty great. Yes. Now, uh, let's get into the accessories. We talked about the different hands. So you do have this shocked portrait that it's come to come with. Then we have the additional gritting teeth angry mid-battle, also beaten and bruised. That's pretty cool. I think uh, I'm going to yeah, look at how, how sliced up. His face is just sliced and diced, man. Yeah, he, he took a few drop, to the uh, cranium there. One to the cheek. Yeah, he's got a few rounds. A couple man. on the chin there. <laughs> he's uh, it's 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 been a rough one. It's been a rough one. Uh, yeah. Next up, this big guy. All right. Or as I like to call it, the lawnmower blade. It, yeah, exactly. I'm gonna shoot a little uplight on it because I do want to show that metallic. Oh, it's broken. Oh, it's the broken version. It is a awesome. broken version. Nice. And uh, what you can see, I'm trying to get a good uh, spot that you can see it on. You see a bit of the red on the on yes. the end there. I believe mm -hmm. that's going to be paint transfer from Cap's shield. Yeah, because it's obviously not blood. It's he not blood. Up. But yeah. remember, that's when he breaks thing when he just violently whacks the heck out of the shield. So I that's like that they've got a little. Yeah, I noticed mm -hmm. that in there. I thought it might have been a reflection, but no, it is actually a reddened paint uh, on there. Great uh, metal looks throughout the whole what a nice touch man that's the whole awesome deal yeah i mean it's just okay. incredible uh and then let's talk about this guy this is what you wanted yes, to let's... see that is the nano gauntlet i'm gonna set him down for a moment boom nano gauntlet all right now you get two ways to display the nano gauntlet this one is done in the snap. Okay, it's molded in snap. But then, of course, you're going to get an additional hand with the articulated fingers that we've seen on the Iron Man fing uh, fingers and the gloves there. Okay? So when you want to actually do the snap, you have it pre-posed. You're also going to notice the difference in one has the stones. The other, no stones. Battery pack alert. in the back. Turn that on. Of course, it's not really... Well, he has no stones, so they don't light up. Oh, man. But, this is a pivotal figure. But boom, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Oh, nice and bright. Nice and bright. Yeah. And there. And look at how beat even the Nano is. Yeah, it is. And it's neat to you see know, they the, have the life they have the life size version of this the Hulk size version of this available on on, on sideshow's website. Yeah, it's still. massive. It's really cool. I've seen that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I I, th I saw Paul standing next to it on uh, Iron Man Day. And Paul looks so it's small. A, man, that's hopes and dreams, baby. Hopes and dreams. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But again, you're going to have both of your options there. Um, something that I noticed about the snapping hand is that he snaps mid finger and thumb. I don't know about you. I'm a uh, point finger or an index finger snapper. How about you? What do you? Uh, I you snap pretty much. Am, I am pretty much a middle finger snapper. You're a middle yeah. finger, snapper. Paul. Yeah, I can't do it. No, not middle finger. The you're an index finger. Ring finger? Wait, oh, yeah. whoa, 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 whoa! Wait I a used second to do here. The ring finger. You're a yeah. ring finger snapper. Yeah, yeah. I, I can snap with all of my fingers actually, but well, that's just. That's unheard of. That's unheard. If I need of. volume. I'm going for straight volume. It's it's the ring finger. What I'm what I'm ring finger snapper, Paul. What I'm expecting is the chat is just telling everybody's talking about which finger they snap with. Um, and the entire chat. Also, while I'm here, we had a couple questions for you guys. Great. Uh, and a some speculation or, uh -huh. you know, from the the red on the um, the double edged sword there. Some people think it's residual heat or magic from Wanda. Okay. As well, which I also, I don't know. I think it might be more from the shield as well, or maybe from even just hitting Tony's armor over and over and over and over. Um, and then also we had a question from Toy Quest. He wants to know really quick, 
when posing uh, Hot Toys for both of you, do you guys look for like direct inspiration from the movies or do you try to go like, you know, outside of the scenes, specifically with a piece that is so directly correlated to, uh, you know, like Endgame? Like, are you going like straight movie scenes for both of you or do you want to sort of use your imagination and go past that? Yes. Nice. <laughs> I do both. I mean, seriously, I, I mean, it depends. Um, it, a lot of the times when I start, when I start working with a figure, I'll go from my memory. Um, just in, and whether, and the thing about memory is that memory is imperfect, but I've, I've done, I've, I, I don't want to, it almost sounds being glorious to say I've studied posing. Um, but I kind of have. I mean, I haven't like studied it scholastically or at some, at some institution or anything. But I've just made it my hobby or and my uh, my passion to uh, to understand it as much as I can without spending thousands of dollars to go to a, a college to uh, to learn about it. But um, and I, you know, to one degree or another, I've I've been pretty successful with it. I think. But um, I'm able to implement that, combine that knowledge with my memory to achieve a, what what I would consider to be a decent pose. Um, now, having said that, there are times when I just exhaust, my memory's just like, nah, I got nothing. So when that happens, then I do turn to Google or I do turn to the show. Um, there have legitimately been times when I've been flying out to Sideshow to do How to Be a Poser episodes where I've had my iPad on the plane and just been screen capping, screen capping scenes from, uh, from the films so that I can, uh, and I, it, actually screen capping doesn't work, so I had to take my phone and do snapshots of the iPad to try to find different poses that I thought might work and either. So if that's the way that you do decide to go with it, know that doing an exact pose from an actual film may not always be the best course of action because it may not be the, you may think it's going to look cool, but in point of fact, in point of fact, it does break some rules when it comes to pose, when it comes to posing. So what you want to do then is get it as close as you can and then modify it to make it look even better than it does on screen. Uh, if such is possible, um, I hope that helped. I, uh, I feel like I kind of rambled there a little bit, but um, but I think that uh, I think that's the best way to explain it. If you have any Before questions, Brother, just hit me up in the comments of the video. And I do look at these videos uh, every so often. And um, if it happens, so if you have any questions concerning that, feel free to hit me up. Guy, how about you? I will repeat hey. everything you said. That's uh, <laughs> you're absolutely right. Um, I look at a lot of the inspiration. Um, I think what I normally do is when I first like we're doing here, take it out of the box, get to enjoy and kind of kind of play and, and see where I'm at with it. Um, usually I will be watching the film. Often I listen to the soundtracks of the films. That's kind of my big thing uh, to be inspired. Uh, and then I may want to work it into kind of that or um, I often want to do a frame in between the frames, if that makes sense. Uh, 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 it, you know, a single shot that you didn't necessarily see um, is where I like to go with it. So, look okay. at this guy. Um, the, so I like what you've got there, guy, but I think we can probably do better. Oh, we, you, yeah. Uh, um, really, the yeah. only reason I did this here was to show you that um, this guy it's comes so with cool. a huge base. Okay, this is yeah. this is another uh, new addition. It does mm -hmm. have the clear stand. This is not a dynamic stand, so don't try and bend this one because it will snap. Um, don't, don't, please, don't. Yeah, please don't do that one. Uh, but you do have the uh, grab underneath, and that is, of course, adjustable to height. Uh, there is a spot that you can do it in. Um, but I like that it had the two there. I mean, if you have the Thor figure or the Cap figure, you may choose to pose them on there and him uh, ominously being over it. But um, well, let, me, let me just say that I, I, I love what you've done there because, I mean, that, this, this to me was a critical juncture um, for that pose there just illustrates a critical juncture for Thanos in the in the Avengers in game film. Uh, the point where Captain Marvel shows up and just torpedoes with her body torpedoes uh, Thanos's ship and just drops it right into into the lake. There's that so moment bad. where he's he's got that look on his face. He sees it happening and you can and you just know he's just like I can lose this. This may not this victory is not assured this could actually go downhill for me rather quickly. And it's, it's just one of two occasions when that expression happens in the film, the other happening uh, later on and later on down the line. Uh, and I think we'll probably do something with that head, but Guy, I think we should go ahead and start posing him. Let's go ahead and swap the head before we do, if you don't mind. 
Not a problem. Happy to do it. Yeah. So we're going to go with gritting teeth, angry guy. Yes. Are we going not angry to angry guy? Not angry guy. Clender. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, are we going angry to go guy. with a helmet on or off at this point? Oh, um, on. Definitely helmet on. on. Definitely yeah. on. Although I think that uh, I'm trying to remember exactly at what point the uh, the sword was broken, but I think for what I have in mind. Um, it would be more accurate to have the non-damaged uh, sword. Uh, well, if you have the ba uh, the uh, the armored version, you will have that. It's one of the I accessories. I have the armored version. It's actually one foot to my left. Oh, there you go. All <laughs> right. So, wow. <laughs> Look at that. Just putting the knee up, and you get this huge life. That's all that you need to do, guys. Okay, Did a little we're done. a little over. a little Terry trunk twist there. Uh, a yeah. little turn to the head there. Um, yep. To give it that grr. Mm-hmm. I dig it. Okay. All right. So here's what we're gonna do, guy. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, what I want to do is I want to illustrate that that amazing fan service, just pivotal moment when, um, right after Captain America had had grabbed Mjolnir out of the air, and to the shock of everyone, you know, cries of joy are echoing echoing simultaneously throughout theaters worldwide at this point, and. Um, so let's go ahead and post Thanos as if he were going to be facing off with Captain America. Um, not quite the point where they're running at each other, but when mm -hmm. he's just like just breaking down, just getting his grit, gritty teeth on, okay, and getting ready to charge. So, getting the uh, gritty teeth on. I like that phrase. Getting the gritty teeth on. Getting baby. the gritty teeth on. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Why don't you uh, show me how we're going to do our arms and legs on this guy? Would you be mm -hmm. kind enough, Terry, to stand up and do a little running yep. Thanos pose for me? Okay, I have to apologize to everybody because I do not have a um, a sword. Here. Big blade. Um, I do have an axe. I guess that could do. Hey, I believe that was featured in this battle. <laughs> That's fine. I've really got to take the batteries out of that thing, or else Hasbro needs to add an offset to it. So here's what I want. Here's what I'm thinking. Um, when he's when he's breaking down and girding himself for battle. Thanos legitimately just kind of squats and like leans forward. He's like, he's got his arm out like this, and he's got his sword arm back like this. You following me? Yes, I am, sir. All right, cool. So you're gonna need to get that torso twist in there, and you know how, to, and you know how to affect that. Is everybody able to hear me? Okay. Yes. We, yeah, we are can, yeah. indeed. I don't know how much longer I can hold this pose. I like trying to do this uh, as quickly as as possible. It's fine. Oh yeah, it's, I should probably point out to everybody at home that it's always best with this with this Thanos figure, in my experience, to put the sword into his hand before attaching the hand to the body. Just uh, eliminates the potential for you to actually pop the hand off the wrist peg and then have, having to put it back on again. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's that's looking okay there. All right. I actually have. I think while you're doing that, while you're getting that together, um, mm -hmm. guy, I feel like this is an opportune moment at the bottom of the hour to go ahead and remind people at home that um, of the show that I do with Sideshow called Strike a Pose. Uh, it's legitimately a game show in which three contestants, all of them posers, uh, go toe to toe in a six scale posing battle royale. Um, everybody gets a copy of the same figure, and you have a certain amount of time to affect the best pose that you can. And there, and at the end, everybody's pose is judged by me, and the winner is chosen. Um, it's uh, it's a lot of fun. We've typically been using um, for the show. We've been testing it with uh, sideshow peeps, uh, people who work at sideshow, as well as friends of sideshow. Uh, but now, for the second time in the show's history, we are going to be hosting a fan edition of the show. Um, now. You can see there, there at the bottom of the screen, the link that you need to go to side.show backslash pose auditions 21. Go to that link, follow, me, follow the instructions and just submit the best pose that you can for, uh, for judging. Uh, the production team will be the ones deciding who gets to be on the show. We'll be looking for posing ability, but we'll also be looking for on-screen presence. So, you know, give, give us your best personality. Uh, just put your best face forward and, uh, and just show us how awesome you are. Uh, one thing that I should point out, typically, when we were doing the show in the studio, 
Uh, the winner of the contest is the only one who got to keep the figure. But because we're shipping everybody these figures at their homes, everybody gets to keep the figure, so everybody goes home a winner. So if you get to participate in this, you're going to get a free Sideshow figure, Hot Toys figure, some, some six-scale figure from Sideshow's wide repertoire of figures that they have there at, at the factory. Factory, no, I guess warehouse. Anyway, but there you go. Looking forward to seeing what everybody does with this because it's a lot of fun. I love, I love seeing what other people do with their six scale figures. And it'll, it's just a lot of fun for me to be able to do that. Uh, so, I've, uh, Guy, have you made any progress there? What are we looking at? Well, take can a I look see? here. I like that we yeah, can get that wide I, stance. That is really, really wide. I think it's a little too wide. Um, so let's Ratcheting in. it in. All right, cool. Awesome. Now, here's what I think. Okay, this is what you've got. Mm -hmm. Okay. Try not to hit my head on the Hobbit lamp above me. Um, but just looking at what you got there, you just got them kind of like this. But I think that we can just really turn that torso in and have him lean a little bit further forward. Did the armor come up? Well, remember it's magnetic. Yes. So. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely it's yeah. So the nice part is I can right. remove it, and I'm going to put the helmet back on. And again, I think that I think that stance is a bit wide, and I think maybe we can probably just um, unbend that left leg by one joint, by one click. Yeah. Okay. Unbent right. left single clink. And I think I see where the I think I see what I'm what I'm missing here. That that torso twist guy should be to his right, not to his left. Okay. Yeah. Well, that'd do it. Yeah, I think that helps. Now, uh, Terry, while I was doing that, I should point out, make sure you don't get these in the crease there. That's going to definitely limit your. You know what? I totally did that when I posed when yep. I posed this figure. Make sure that it I've doesn't that. Uh, doesn't wind up getting. I don't stuck like, why did that? Why does it look so weird? Oh, yeah. okay. You're right. Okay, other direction. Whoops, I went with the direction. Oh boy, does that change it a lot? Wow. Yeah. Okay, so here's so rotate him about ten degrees to his left, so yeah. that I can get a look at where he's at because I think oh. that I think that can be made. Yeah. All right. So see how he's kind of just straight up and down with the uh, with the uh, the pauldrons. How they're just almost almost like perpen They're almost parallel to the ground. I really want to kind of like lean his shoulder into the, his front shoulder into that a little bit more, so that that back, so that, that right pauldron is quite a bit above the left pauldron. Okay, I think I'm going to achieve yeah. that by uh, adjusting this front leg. Yes, a bit you more got it. bend you got it. in there. Yeah. How's that, Terry? Okay, and then what I would do, yeah, that's good, that's good. And what I would do is see how his back arm is kind of like this. Mm -hmm. What I would do is I would like lower that just a touch and then rotate it back and then bring it back further out. Like he's just really swung that thing back there hard. So if you lower that instead, instead of like swinging it back like that, if you rotate it backwards, then you get a little bit more play in the figure. How's that for rotated hand? I'm having a chair malfunction here. That's it. That's it. That's her business face right there, bud. And that's, Ooh, that that's looks good. good. Yeah. That is neat. Uh, as I was uh, saying, yeah. and you had pointed out oh, before. So still going a little wide on the stance. I would, bring the, I would bring those legs together a bit. Yeah, there we go. I went a little wider in the stance only to kind of uh, turn downward. Sure, sure. Getting that uh, shoulder the way right. I wanted it. Got it. All right, that's awesome. Does he have, do you have anybody there? I know that you like to bring in uh, friends of the figures that we pose, Guy. Is there anybody there that you think would be uh, would be fit for this? Friends of the figures. Um, well, the, friends being a, you know, loosely applied term. Yes. Well, I think this particular scene when he was, uh, I love that Cap, even with that shield all busted up, decided yes. to just tighten it and go at it. Because he... Yes. He can yeah. quote do this all day. Um, There's that we we talked about this before, but uh, but I'm going to bring it up for for if Paul hasn't heard me talk about it, and I know that um, the, the viewing audience obviously hasn't. But there's that moment when uh, when Cap just uh, tugs that uh, strap down, and Thanos is just staring at him deadpan, and 
it's it was amazing to me the way that that without even changing expression he was able to convey so much thought so much of what he thought was going on just the, the just deadpan look of He just looks away briefly and then back it and then back at Captain America, just that he's resolute. And yeah. you can almost tell that he straight up admires what's happening here. But at the same time, he regrets it. Uh, he's recognizing that there's that there is a powerful figure, a noble soul, quite the warrior who's in front of him right now. And he regrets, at least to some extent, what is about to come or what he thinks is about to come. Hashtag on your left. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's a great looking <laughs> That portrait is just awesome. That's, it's it's really neat. It's mm -hmm. really neat, and I I love the captain. I I uh, just received mine a little bit a while ago, and uh, he's got so much yeah. that you get to do right. with him having the two different shields. Obviously, yeah. um, you know you have his big blade. This could be the this could be the smash moment if you uh, if you wanted to. Uh, cool. To work so, out. Um, guy, yeah, really, uh, I want to ask Paul once more if we have any further questions from our viewing audience. If not, then we can go ahead and hit another pose. Not a, well, not a, uh, we, I mean, we did have people who were curious as if you guys could bring in other six scales so we could see the, the true glorious purpose and side, uh, size, I'm sorry, of Thanos. So uh, having those there is very helpful. Yeah, I think I think that's something that we're going that we can do. Uh, so we, uh, we've already done there a little bit. Wow, look at that. Obviously yeah. kind of that's... cheating it so they're both looking at you, but yeah. Towards, I think towards the end of the show, we'll go ahead and bring in at least one more figure just to give a just to get yeah. a little bit more of a comparison of the size. But for now, guy, I think I want to go ahead and uh, I mean, I th I know everybody's screaming for it. At least uh, I've heard seen at least two or three people talking about the finger snap. So let's go ahead and do it. Let's uh, let's go ahead and pose Thanos in that pivotal moment at the end of the at the end of the show when he realizes, oh crap, I've been had. The ultimate ultimate pickpocket. Yeah, Tony Stark. Or as you like to call him, Tony eighty five. Tony eighty five. By the way, I'm going to start doing that from now on. That's that's how I'm going to. That's what I'm going to call all my Iron Man Iron Man armors. I've got Tony fifty over here to my left. <laughs> I've got Tony twenty two down on the bottom shelf. All right. So for that, we're obviously going to have our shocked portrait. Yes. And that's another reason why we want to bring that into uh, into the show. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, he does not have his helmet on for that. Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to show this on both arms. They are a solid piece, all right? Yeah. So you're removing actually from up there. It's not a slide on, slide right. off. That's obviously, that's obviously a little piece, so it looks like if, you know, trim the arm. Yeah. So. I want to say they do something similar with the uh, with the other one. Mm -hmm. No, it's different. It's a slip on. Come yep, on. It's a slip that's on right. one. Yeah. Um, very, very and this cool. is going to be. Yeah. Okay. Snap. I. What's that? Sir? I get so emotional every time that I watch this part of the uh, of the of the film. Um, and I'm I'm sure that I'm not alone in that. It's uh it's just, the journey started so long ago with Tony Stark. Um, God, I can't even remember what was the uh, what was the year of the first Iron Man movie. Was it 07, 08? Uh, it's somewhere in there. But um, the first Iron Man movie is 08. Was 08? Okay, cool. Yeah. The, but just, to have yeah. it start with Tony and then end with Tony, this this first monumental undertaking um, that uh, the, the Marvel Studios took on with the MCU. Uh, it's unprecedented. Um, just about everything about it was perfect from beginning to end. And I, uh, man, me personally, having read Marvel Comics since 1982, wow, or 83, Actually, the first one that I picked up was a G.I. Joe comic, but superheroes came along later. Uh, it was it meant so much to me to have it in this way, and um, and yeah. So every time that I watch it, I get a little bit emotional. So if you ever have me over to do a marathon, yeah, pack tissues. I'll thank you for it later. Yeah. I love That's that really base. Cool, dude. That's really cool, dude. I really awesome. like the base. I like that, you know, just a little movement yeah. in there yeah. gives it a lot. Okay. So here's what you do. Mm -hmm. um, so go ahead and take that, and then rotate. Can we? Can you rotate the hand so that the back of it is facing him? Uh, you want him to see that there's no stones? Yes. So yeah, rotate that around. He's like, oh, sh oh shit. <laughs> it's a, you know, it's uh, man. The okay. zoinks. Yeah. Okay. So I love this, but what I would really love. 
is um is if he was turning and facing to his left. No, no need for a torso twist. I think it was fine the way it was. Just turn his head to his left. So it's after he's seen it. Yeah. And I would lower that arm, that left arm. Rotate it, just rotate it back. Yeah. All right. That's, uh, that's, you know, that, that's not quite working for me because of the snap. That's unfortunate. That's too bad. Uh, that, yeah, because the other does have the stones. Yeah, it does have the stones. Okay. It does I have didn't the stones. That um, I mean, yeah. it, I so think it's you because... Had, what you had there was a... The changing of the there's head a, there. A brief moment after the snap where he looks at, it, at his hand and he's just like, kind of before he turns and notices that the stones are gone. So that's really what you're going to have to do wow, if you want to hit this. Speaking of which, though, I think that... Uh, there's something that's happening in Thanos' immediate vicinity at that moment, right when he does the snap. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I'm not going to be coy about it. Bring me the Mark 85. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready for that. Bringing, bringing the Mark 85, sir. And then I'll have you make one more adjustment to Thanos, and then, and then we'll call that a wrap on the posing. Okay, we're going to light him up. That's that's a good that's good to bring him in like that because now we can actually now that he's on the ground that way you can really see the difference in scale between the two man he's just massive Thanos is yeah I mean you can see it it's pretty effective in the films but to have that presence um, suggested on the shelf is is another matter entirely and and just having them side by side they're on the same plane the way that you've got them it's uh, it really it really illustrates that nicely I'm gonna I'm step glad, to that end I'm glad you didn't choose to put him on his knees. Um, no. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's really really awesome. Um, mm -hmm. I believe, guy, that you have some other um, comparisons to make. Yes. If you will. Yes. Right? In fact, I thought that was kind of important to uh, to show. Yeah. We're gonna move Tony eighty five over here. Yeah. Cool. Now let's just go ahead and bring that in. I'm there, as y'all know that there's there's more than uh, there's uh, there's obviously this version of Thanos. There's the er, there's the version of Thanos armored from the earlier part of the films uh, before he goes into battle. Also, Hot Toys made the Infinity War version of Thanos, which is a great great figure. I mean, I, I loved that about that they that they introduced Thanos in his armor as he's kicking the crap out of Asgardians, and then before he goes on his journey to find the rest of the Infinity Stones, he almost ritualistically removes all of his armors, just strips himself down. It makes him more human. It makes him more relatable. It makes him more accessible as a character, and again, almost almost humanizes him in a way that I found really really appealing. Again, I keep talking a lot. I know I'm talking a lot about it today, but I did did sympathize in a very uncomfortable way with Thanos during that film, and I know that that was the goal. But look at that. Mm -hmm. Look at all three of those together, man. Wow, good stuff. It is it is neat to see the evolution. Now, do you recall the yeah. first time we saw Thanos? Yeah, yeah, I do recall the first time we saw Thanos, Guardians of the Galaxy. There was yeah, the uh, there, there was the grin moment actually at the end of Avengers, but uh, the first time we actually saw him in full. Oh, look at that! That, He's chair. that was our very first. Yeah, smaller scale. They hadn't uh, they hadn't actually sized him up at that point. Um, it's interesting because you can see just the way that the even the design of a character can evolve throughout the production of the multiple films. Um, he was originally intended to be a good deal smaller. Uh, I'm, obviously, I'm thrilled by the fact that they made him so large and imposing, uh, just made him that much more horrifying. I mean, can you imagine this guy coming at you? I can't imagine the smaller version coming at me, but uh, anyway, so that looks great. Yeah, thanks very much for that guy. Oh, that's, sure. uh, that's really a treat. I wish I could be there with you, but uh, well, <laughs> me <too>. someday. <laughs> All right. Um, do we have time for one more? I'm trying to figure out if we have time for one more pose, or if we want to just go ahead and because uh, I, I um, got actually I asked Alan. Is Alan right there? Got, Alan, do you want us to do another pose? Sure. Alan says <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Alan wants to know if Stormbreaker can fit into his hand. Um, I'm kind of uh, kind of wondering that myself. Can Stormbreaker fit into the yeah. hand of Thanos? Yeah, we'll have to swap that around because there's that that 
that moment right before Cap catches uh, Mjolnir, snatches the Mjolnir out of the out of the way after after basically sucker punching Thanos with it, which was good on you, Cap. That's so Brooklyn. But um, he's uh, he um, I don't even know what that means. That's so Brooklyn. I've never been to Brooklyn. But uh, <laughs> that that moment when he's got Stormbreaker and he's pushing Stormbreaker into Thor's chest unknowingly basically returning the tables on thor from the previous movie because that never happened to that thanos but just switching the roles so, so that it's now thanos who's driving the blade of stormbreaker into thor's chest as opposed to vice versa uh that was that had to be pretty horrifying for thor that is going to be the stuff of nightmares for that particular asgardian um it's also like right before um it's also right before uh, he gets hit upside the head with uh, with me owner by Cap. So I think if we can make that happen, and it looks like we can. Boom, yes. Dang. So that's cool. It will fit that's in there. Cool. I don't know that we have time to uh, to actually uh, actually make that pose happen. Uh, there's a lot of manipulation that would have to go on right there, and I don't think I don't think we have time to do that today, but I'm really glad that we did that to show people. That yeah, I do, we do want to show that it uh, is possible. Look at that. Whoa! I forgot. I keep forgetting about that light up. So you're feature. forgetting that great light up effect, right? So mm. neat. Would that? Here's the question, and may, and maybe the audience members can answer as well. And I don't think that it happened in the film, but would Stormbreaker light up for Thanos when Thanos was yielding it, yielding it, wielding it? Really? I don't think I don't it would. Think so. I don't think it would. Yeah. Because the you lightning's be, from you have to be the Thunder God, or you have to be the uh, the first Avenger to make that happen. Mm -hmm yeah okay well that's a wrap man we did some awesome stuff with this figure today i'm really excited by it another thanos to add to the shelf um thanks everybody for uh for t thanks everybody for tuning in um yeah we're glad that we hope that you're able to join us tomorrow for the special friday the 13th episode of unsealed and revealed when we'll be giving away uh the jason Voorhees six scale figure by sideshow so make sure that you're here for that so that you have an opportunity to win you will have to be in the chat at the time in order to receive your prize um yeah thank you and uh so thanks again to our guy in the chair paul hernandez for fielding all those questions for us and uh, and and uh, keeping everybody's questions answered in the chats uh thanks to my buddy paul for being my hands and my eyes and my ears on scene um thank you to everybody there in the studio producer alan producer sam producer michael for holding everything together and making everything awesome mm -hmm. uh we'll see you tomorrow i hope and until then don't forget to let your geek side show